Welcome back to my channel. I'm Nina. This is the Red Elevator. And today we are going to talk about something really exciting. And those are the seven interior design trends that are making a comeback. By the way, I'm sharing my absolute favorite in the end. So make sure you stick around. You don't want to miss all of these trends, but especially the seventh. Trend number one, tiles in our living spaces. Let me explain. Tiles aren't being relegated just to the bathroom and kitchens anymore. We are seeing a beautiful resurgence of tiled spaces throughout the home. So from your living room to your family room and everywhere else. Tiles offer incredible versatility. They're durable, they're easy to clean, they're eye-catching, and they can add character to a space that normally is void of it. When you only have drywall and flooring, it just can be really boring. So from handmade Zellich tiles to sleek, large format porcelains, the possibilities are truly endless. They can create a sense of craftsmanship and attention to detail that's hard to achieve. Now, here's how it's being used. Tile flooring, not only for your bathroom, but look at this gorgeous space that has this small pattern in various shades of tile. So this provides a really solid visual foundation that can either anchor a room's design or it can become a sort of standout feature like in a foyer, having a foyer with small pattern tile. This you've seen before, but another application is tiling your fireplace. I am loving this trend because it is really just an updated version of what used to be very big in the 60s and 70s, but it's really bringing back that natural aesthetic and the focal point in your room. And you can do it in a variety of colors in different ways. Take a look also at the tiled walls that are in living spaces. So you can have tiled walls next to a bookcase that really offsets the bookcase and it just creates a lot of visual appeal. And bars are also getting tiled fronts. So instead of doing a slab or instead of doing marble, which is sort of overdone, now you can actually have vertical thin tiles. One thing I want to say is that all of the tile applications tend to be on a smaller scale. Smaller pattern tile is really what's being used right now. The next trend has been making a comeback for some time with no end in sight. But before I get into that, I wanted to mention that if you guys are struggling with tile selection, color selection, room layout, whatever it may be, you can easily book a 25 or a one hour or longer session with me on Zoom. All you have to do is click the link in the description section. My calendar pops up, you click a button, and next thing you know, we have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom together. I know you guys have seen this before, but I would be remiss not to mention it because it is a huge trend and it is going nowhere. And that is asymmetrical furniture. So if you guys are worried that perhaps it's phasing out and you're worried about buying asymmetrical pieces, well, you heard it from me that this eye-catching phenomenon is nowhere near its end because it's very organic, it's very lived in, and most of our walls are straight and mitered. So this is a really great trend. Now, how is it being used? This is where I'm going to be doing a little bit of updating. We are still using them not only on our sofas, but we're seeing them in the ribbon chair. Now, the ribbon chair has been around since the mid-century, so this is not a new trend. However, it is spilling into mirrors. It was very hard at one point to find asymmetrical mirrors, but now they're ubiquitous. They're great. They're wonderful. I'm not getting tired of them. I love them. A square mirror is so boring compared to getting a beautiful um, asymmetrical mirror. Trend number three, which is new, 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 but again, it is a resurgence of a very old trend that's back, and that is dark, deep colored woods. Not only dark and deep, but also the type of wood that is being used. We're using burl wood, we're using maple wood, we're using darker stains. So out with the very, very light everything, the white oaks, unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier to you guys, when we talked about flooring, you said, I wanna do white oak floors. I said, just remember, this is a trend. Keep things classical. A Parisian apartment flooring is just a very medium shaded brown sort of wood. And if it started in white oak, over time it patinas to sort of a darker 
um, oak, which is beautiful and perfect and timeless. So darker woods, I love them. They bring so much warmth, so much sophistication, and that is what is trending as we speak. Now, how is it being used? Well, it's not only being used in what you would surmise would be paneled walls in a library, which is sort of understood, but also in furniture. You can mix a lighter colored floor with a darker wooded credenza. A lot of you are worried to mix your woods. Do not worry, bring in different shades of wood. You do not have to stick to one shade of wood. Also, we are utilizing them in kitchens. Dark wood kitchens contrasted by maybe a lighter marble is really beautiful and definitely on trend. I forgot to mention that we are now, while this video is being filmed, at almost 92,000 subscribers. If it wasn't for you guys listening and being kind and being wonderful and subscribing, we wouldn't be almost at 100,000. So help me in reaching that 100,000. It would be huge, huge, hugely helpful. So if you haven't subscribed, ring that subscription button. Number four, this is old, definitely old. Almost grandma chic but it's now back and I kind of like it. I don't know if I like it a lot, but I like it maybe for a short moment. I just don't know how far I can go with this trend, but I have to mention it. And that is the skirted beds and chairs. So skirted beds, I have a problem with because they never look right because nobody can make sure that they're absolutely perfect. So what I prefer to do is to put a very large oversized comforter that goes all the way to the floor. We're gonna pop in a picture of that so you understand what I'm talking about. And that is essentially the same thing that I love. In fact, that is how I used to have all of my bedrooms. They always used to have a very long comforter all the way to the ground. They have a beautiful billowing effect. And that to me is very, very beautiful and really easy because then you don't have to worry about what's under the bed or what the bed skirt looks like. Or, or even if you have a very simple bed, this can certainly elevate it. Having the skirted chairs is also very new, whether it's a sofa or whether it's a chair. It's a little bit country cottagey, but it can also make a statement. Perhaps you have a ultra modern home and you place a skirted chair in a corner. I think that has a lot of visual creativity and it incorporates the trend into your new designs. Number five, guys, we're getting so close to number seven, which is my favorite. I used to have it everywhere and now I realize I don't have it anywhere. So maybe I can do it again. Another trend that is along the lines of Grandma Chic, which we love, and if you guys haven't seen my Grandma Chic episode, I'm gonna link it right here in this video. It'll also be linked in the description section so you can watch that episode, which was um, received super well. And that is incorporating shints and florals. And I mean everywhere. And I think it's, actually, I know it's a good trend. Do you guys remember the days of Laura Ashley? I had it in my dorm room, don't ask. And it was sort of very, I want to say dated, but now these floral patterns are so moody. They're so sophisticated. People are putting them on their walls. They're putting them in bathrooms. They're putting them in kitchens. I kid you not. And they are being used as a statement. It is um, also being used in upholstery and why not? A lot of shins is being used for statement pieces. Um, armchairs, sofas. It's a great way to add a focal point to rooms without sort of overwhelming the space. And accent pillows, of course, and curtains. We've seen this before in the past, but now we're really espousing this. And for those of you who are not willing to commit to a very large space or a large pattern, then you can certainly do it in your accent pieces or your wallpaper. Remember, a powder room can be crazy. So if you are hesitant to do this, do it in a little space because you're Jeff, because you're definitely going to love it. And another place I like to do something a little bit off the wall is in a closet. So you could always close the door and pretend it's not there if it bothers you, but it would be fun to do it in a coat room, a coat closet. So if guests, when guests come over, you open the closet, it's just a tiny little closet, you hang their coats, there's a wow moment, and it really has a lovely impact. Number six, we are almost at the last one. And that trend is going to add drama to your bedroom. Are you guys ready for this? That's right, curtains. 
but curtains not on your windows, but curtains on your canopy of your bed. So bed drapes really add a lot of vertical space and vertical volume to a room, which is nice for those of us who have extra large bedrooms. Texas, I know, is famous for having very, very large bedrooms. So if you guys are in Texas and your room feels empty, this is your place. I wouldn't do it in a tiny, tiny bedroom, but I would certainly do it in large rooms. And it's kind of nice because it creates a cozy environment to sleep in. People have said that they sleep better when they're sort of enveloped in this type of curtain canopy situation. So creating a moody room with draping canopy is really interesting. I mean, if you just look at these photos, you can also um, float a bed in front of drapes, which we're doing quite a bit of because not every room is ideally designed for a bed. And that happens with older homes where they have lots of little windows that are asymmetrical and in strange places. And in those instances, we always just literally line the entire room with curtains. And uh, that way the bed placement is a lot more uh, eye-catching and definitely much more elevated. And finally, my favorite trend of all are stripes. How are stripes being used? Well, they're definitely being used in bedding, as you can see on pillows and comforters and things of that nature. And they're really having a moment um, without really overwhelming the space. Upholstery, I'm loving striped upholstery, like the sofa that you're able to see here. I think it's just so chic and it's such a good moment. Dining chair upholstery is also big when it comes to stripes. Essentially, it is something that is very sophisticated. It is almost like a striped suit, like a men's shirt. It is very timeless, so do not worry if this is something you're um, hesitant about. Wallpaper is also really beautiful in a stripe. It can be tone on tone. But one of the reasons why I should say striped is having a major comeback is because Florals are making a comeback. And what other pattern can you mix with florals that works? Well, the only pattern is going to be a stripe. So it is beautiful, it is sophisticated, and I am really loving how it is being utilized in today's modern spaces. Definitely check out our number one trending video of all time right now, I'm not kidding, is my top 10 IKEA picks. It's linked for you here. I can't wait to see you guys again on this channel, The Red Elevator.